Hi, everybody. It's Barbie from Nellie and Ruth Designs, and thank you for uh, joining in today. Today's going to be a little bit different. I'm not going to be crafting. I thought I would share with you uh, some of my favorite go-to items I cannot live without, items I can't craft without type video. Um, everybody has their favorites. Everybody has their go-tos, and I just wanted to kind of share yours mine with you. Um, my daughter, and I, the reason I'm doing this, my daughter-in-law came to me today. My daughter-in-law is a really sweet girl from Romania. She's 23 years old. Um, and she loves to craft, but she comes into my craft room and she's a bit overwhelmed. I think, I don't know. That's just what I, what I gather. She's trying to find what she wants to do. She's tried painting. She's dr tried drawing. She's tried all different kinds of things. And I think she'd like to try to get into, I wouldn't necessarily say scrapbooking or junk journaling or, but she likes a lot of little items. And I'm sure there's a lot of young girls out there. I mean, I'm old. I've been doing this since I was, well, I haven't been doing it as long as a lot of girls. I've been doing this for 23 years now, and over those years, I have gathered so many materials. It's, it's very easy to allow um, yourself to get out of hand, spend money that you don't need to spend, buy things you don't need. So that's why I thought this video would be kind of good to do. So um, I kind of want to, you know, help my daughter-in-law. I've been thinking about you know, she said to me today, well, I don't even know where to start. I don't even know what I need to buy, which I tell her she doesn't need to buy anything. She can just use my stamp pads, my stamps, and I have so much. There's really no need for her to spend any of their money. She can't work yet. She doesn't have a green card, and um, they need to pay their bills and and other things. So, I guess this is what brought this video around. So I'm going to share with you, like I said, things that um, I I fall back on, I use every day, I, I really can't live without, and they're my go-tos. So I'm going to try to do this in an orderly fashion, so we'll see how it works. Um, I think the first thing I'll show you are the tools that I use. I'm going to set this here because I don't want to forget. I want to talk about... Uh, my my how I bind some of my books here um so I'm going to set my glasses aside here glasses yes I have many pairs of glasses cheaters around I think I have six or seven pairs they all end up in one spot I think I have another pair on my desk behind me um to pay bills but I try to leave them in strategic places around the house and they always end up every place that I don't want them to be. So as you can see, I have three pairs right here. Um, so I think I'll start with my tools. I'll try to do this in an orderly fashion. So the first thing I would suggest to everyone is to get yourself a good pair of scissors. Uh, I will say these are Fiskar. And I think Fiskar makes probably the the best, it just, and this is just based on my opinion. I'm, I don't work for anyone. I don't get paid. I don't get a kickback for promoting their items. I'm just going based on my experience. The other, I don't know, these were my mother's scissors and she used them before it was probably fashionable. She did a lot of fuss, fussy cutting back in the early 70s because she used to make beautiful decoupaged eggs and plaques. She would buy greeting cards and then uh, she would fussy cut them and make beautiful creations. So these were my mom's, but I like these because these are very, very sharp. I do not know where she purchased them. It could have been a sewing store. Uh, they are a little funky shape. So I do use these quite often when I'm fussy cutting, but these are my go-to. And these here I have had for many, many years. I think this is a little sharpener. I've never used it. They've always stayed. These are still very sharp. And I think I've really had these for almost 20 years. They have a little case and then I can just, you know, pop them around, throw them around or whatever. I can actually run with these because they have a, uh, 
they have a case. I don't, I don't promote running with scissors, but these, if I'm trying to get to the phone through the upstairs, I can just either, if I have a mommy, I, I can run with them. Um, the other things that I swear by, I have a Cricut Explore Air and the tools that came with that. I have a few Cricuts, some of the older ones. And these are the tools that came with them. You know, you have your paddle. Because I, I'm a nail biter um, and I don't have long nails, I don't get uh, manicures or I don't keep my nails up. I need a lot of times to be able to peel stickers. I need to, like this washi tape here, sometimes it, it will get caught because of the way it's um, it's uh, uh, adhered on here. I'll lose some. So I can take my paddle or I can take the pointer there and I can just kind of lift things up and ease it as I go along. So I can't always rely and depend on my fingernails because my nails are always a mess. And I use these a lot to uh, press things down if I'm creating, say this is a pad that I created the other day. Uh, when I get something glued down, I can flip it over and I use this to make sure it's all um, adhered on there securely. So these I use quite often. And again, these here I use a lot for the back of stickers or things, um, you know, to, to peel things away. So these two, you can get these, I think, in a pack of three or four, all the tools at Joanne Fabrics. If you have a Joanne's, you'll find these in the Cricut area. I can't tell you how much a pack is because mine came with my Explore, uh, my Cricut Explore machines. But I, these are these are a must. I have to have these uh, when I work on a regular basis. Let me put those back where they belong. The other thing I have is a um, a bone. I guess that's what they call it. And this is great when. And this is another thing that I I can't live without. You don't need necessarily a large one, um, but this is a score pad. This is a Martha Stewart. And I like the Martha Stewart. I actually have two. I have a score pail. But I like the way uh, the Martha Stewart has, um, the way her ruler is done up here. I think hers is done. One. Hers is done in eights. And... This is fine if you're just doing, you know, five by four, five by six. Um, I'll use this in a pinch, but I really do like the Martha Stewart um, scoreboard. And also with the Martha Stewart, you do get, I guess it's stuck on here. Let me see. And this is where this little tool comes in handy. This might be glued on. Yeah, I can't really read it, but there are, if you can see, she does have a little, um, I don't know if you can see that in there, but she has a little um, direction card in here for cards. So if you want to make a number one standard card, she gives you the dimensions to score at two and an eighth by three and a half. And then this is for... Um, this is a um, folded card, um, and this is a gatefold card. There's, di there's different cards that you can make. And then over here, you can have boxes. So you start with your paper size. She tells you exactly what to do. So that's kind of nice. I've never used that. Um, and then this is, the little, this is the little bone that comes with that. But this one here I bought separate and apart. And I use this for if I'm making cards or whatever. But th this is nice to have on hand. So I use that. Uh, my next tool, when I'm making, this is not, you can buy. I didn't want to spend the money at a uh, at Hobby Lobby or one of the other stores. Um, but when I make my junk journals, this is what I use to poke my holes 
uh, when I have to um, put the signatures in. And it's not as, I'd say, thin as some of the professional, um, I don't even know what you call them, pokers. This is just an all, this is a scratch all AWL. And this I found in my my toolbox. So you can also get these at your hardware store. I don't know how much a hardware store charges um, for these, but I use this and it, it works out just fine in my for my junk journal. So I keep that right in my little box there. Um, the other thing I use for cutting and working on scrapbooks, um, junk journals, and ephemera is my um, X-Acto knife. And again, I could not live without my X-Acto knife because like for example, um, I'm in the process of finishing this pad. I get a lot of images out of my old Sears robot catalogs and other magazines. So what I do is I will cut what I can with the scissors, but I like to be able to I don't like to leave a lot of white, and I do this also on my flowers when I cut them out. And I don't know if I have an example here to the left of me. But I like to cut out the inside so you can still see, you can see the paper behind them. So I really, I rely on my X-Acto knife. I probably use this more than I do my scissors when I'm fussy cutting. For me, it's just very easy. You might have seen in one of my other videos, uh, the video that I did for my master board, uh, adding more depth and I think it was depth and layers. And you'll see on there how I use my X-Acto knife to cut out some, I think they were zinnias, but they almost look like a big firework. And um, I really prefer, I can work faster with an X-Acto knife than I can with my scissors, but just be careful that you don't cut yourself. Um, this is the other little pair of scissors. Again, this came in the Cricut pack, um, and these are still nice and sharp. So you may even still get a pair of scissors. I think you get a paddle uh, for taking up your paper once it's caught on your Cricut machine. You get a paddle, and then you get, I call this a paddle, um, and then your little your little lifter, and then the scissors. So these all come together. So these I use a lot as well. These I do not run with. <laughs> okay, um, for glues, I like the Yoohoo glue stick. Although I find in the wintertime it dries out when my house is really dry and there's no humidity running through it. I use my Yoohoo for all my master boards. I used to make uh, pennant banners. I used this on my pennant banners. This really does adhere your paper down very well. I think I used this Yoohoo. Um, I believe I used this Yoohoo to create this little um, scrapbook style journal, which I will make into a, a cute little junk journal. Um, actually a collage art journal. I found this the other day. So I use this Yoohoo to adhere all of this scrapbooking paper. And you can see that it's it adheres quite nicely. So I use the Yoohoo. And then for my delicate work, um, gluing on small little ephemera pieces such as this, uh, my little German, my German uh, flowers here, I use my art glitter glue. Um, and this comes with a a very narrow, very, very narrow top. I think, it, I think it came with the pack that I bought. Um, and then this, this produces a very small, you can see how, just how tiny that hole is, but it, pro, it produces a very small, thin line on your work. So it's nice if you have, um, you know, something say such as this, this little piece here you can get that right up in this narrow little spot here. Um, the glue glides very nicely on these small little sections. So 
Okay, so I use the art glitter glue. And then when I'm using, working with my fabrics on paper or cardboard or cardstock, I use Fabri-Tac and Fabric Fusion. I think they're pretty much the same. Um, I think most people use these. The only problem I have, which I do not know how to handle, is when I, when I, and I've looked it up, I've Googled it, I cannot find why it does this. But after I use it, it just, and I set it up right, it just seems to continually bubble over. So I don't know, I'm going to have to figure out, I don't know if it's the pressure that I put on the bottle, if I squeeze too hard, but this fabric tack works great. Um, and it works really good if you're applying lace to paper, um, anything like that. So those are the glues that I use. Back over here. And these are things that I'm showing you that you can, I really think it's all you need. And when you do, um, when you do decide, you know, really what you want to do, if you want to create junk journals, if you want to do scrapbooking, I still do a lot of scrapbooking with family photos. Um, just focus on that one area. Um, I think down the road, my son told me today, he goes, Mom, you should do a video on your five biggest mistakes that you've made in crafting. And I said I could do a lot more than five, but I think that would be another good one. Uh, again, if you're into the small ephemera, junk journals, and scrapbooking, I think any paper, and you like to distress your items, and if you don't know what distressing is if if you're new to this distressing is when you take an item and you want to make it look a little more old um worn or used and you take your ink with a uh i guess a dabber um this is ink essentials i bought this at hobby lobby and these are little pads that after they're worn out, you can take them right off. They, there's a nice big piece of Velcro on here. I think Tim Holtz has some as well. His are round. Um, I, like the, I like this style. And it's where you just take your a little bit of ink on your pad and you go around like this. And you just distress it and make it make it look a little bit older and you can do that on anything you want um, makes it just a little more worn so you don't need a lot of different inks I have got probably 15 Ranger ink pads how many of those I've used I bet you three and I really only use them for distressing I do have a lot of stamps that I had purchased over the years. When I make greeting cards, I will stamp and I will make items. I just don't do that anymore. So again, you know, that's why I said, just make sure that you really try to focus on what you want to do because you can spend so much money on, on items and you just won't use them. And you're going to say, Great. Now what am I going to do with it? Sometimes they they dry out. The Tim Holtz uh, ink pads I love. They don't, they just don't dry out. And the other thing that, and I don't know if I can grab one here. Hold on one second. Um, yeah. So I have a little bin here that I keep. And again, these are items that don't keep buying the ink pads if your ink pad gets dry. Now these are stamping up. Um, I know I have got, I believe I have some of the Tim Holtz also. Buy the, buy the inks. 
Uh, so if your ink pad gets low, I don't know what these cost now. I don't know if they're $4.99, $5.99, or $7.99. But the pads don't wear out, all right? The ink does. So what I do now is I just buy a, this one is early espresso. Now this is a Stampin' Up. So you just buy these, invest in a refill, and then you can just ink your your pad all over again. Um, it's just, I think it's a more thrifty way uh, to save some money. So don't don't keep don't keep buying these. Just buy, get yourself a little refill and just keep inking it for yourself. So and you can get any type of brown. This is brushed corduroy. I haven't used much of this. The one that I use a lot is the vintage photo. I just seem to use that. It just sits on my desk. That, that's what I use. So um, those are items that I, I can't live without. I have to have these on hand. The other two inks that I really like are the Memento and these are packed full of ink and I wish they came in a little bit bigger uh, a little bit bigger container I like them because they can set up like that but these come in a pack I think I want to say a pack of eight I'm trying to visualize it on the hanging at the shelf at Hobby Lobby and these I would buy all day long. When I do stamp cards, I have a tendency to use these um, because they just don't ever seem to, to run out. So this is another, I mean, I think this is a good investment. Um, and they do stack on top of each other. So if you don't have room, you know, all eight will stack on top. So I really like the Memento, and I, I do go to these a lot. All right, next up. Um, as far as another ink, I use Stazon Jet Black a lot, and I use that for when I make... Um, this has a terrible smell to it when you first open it up can't think of the smell. I shouldn't say it's a terrible smell. It's a, it's a familiar smell, but I can't tell you. All I can think of is watermelon, but it's not watermelon. Um, but this, it, like, as it says, it's for every surface. So you have to be careful when you use this because I've dropped my, my stamp before on my table and the only thing I can get it up with is the stays on stamp cleaner. And a little hint when you, because this is a permanent ink, I find. And I'm a big one on cleaning my stamps. I know a lot of people don't. Oops. I know a lot of people don't. They just use them over and over and over again. But if you clean your stamp, it's going to last a lot longer. So when I do use my stamps and I clean them, I did make the investment of buying this pad here from uh, Stampin' Up. It's called a Stampin' Scrub. So you take your, um, you take your stamp. I'll show you real quick. I'll just grab any, I'll just grab any stamp here. So this little stamp was on the side, this tulip. So when you get done using your stamp, and I guess I can demonstrate the stays on for you as well, just to show you how dark it is. Um, on this little pad, I don't know if you can see it. There's a little, right here, there's a little uh, umbrella with rain coming down on it. And then on this side, there's drops. So the drop side is the side that you use to clean your brush. Over here is you you dry it. So 
say this is inked up. I'm not going to do it with the stays on because I don't put stays on on here. So say if this is just the Tim Holtz. We'll do, I'll do a quick little demonstration. Um, let me find a scrap piece of... I'll use an old envelope here. So I've got my Tim Holtz here. All right, so I stamp it. Now I want to clean it, all right? So this is the other thing, Stampin' Mist. It's a rubber stamp cleaner. You spray your stamp like that, all right? This is the wet side, so you just go like this. See, and it all comes clean. And then this side, you just use it to dry it. And it comes out really nice every time, all right? This is another thing that, you know, if you are getting into stamping, I would highly suggest um, both the stamp and scrub and the stamp and mist. Now these are really nice because these pop out after you've used them a while and you just run them under your faucet and then you'll see where all the ink just drains out of them. You let them, it's a plastic back. And then you just let them dry. You let them air dry and you stick them right back in. All right, I'll do that later. Okay, so that's one. Now let me show you with the stays on um, ink and how I clean this. Because this to me is really important. Um, you can buy the stays on cleaner from Stampin' Up. I recently bought this from someone, I think on Etsy. And if I can, I should be able to go back. I can put their site on here. This was a little bit, I think it was the same, but shipping was less expensive. Um, Stampin' Up kind of hit you hard on the shipping. So this here, this is how I clean my stamps when I use my stays on. And I use stays on a lot. So, and this is full of, ink is, I mean, you can just kind of see on the bottom. So here's your, here's the stays on. All right. And this just doesn't, after you've made, say like if I was wanted to make um, some labels and I use this over and over and over again, my stamp would be really, really dark. So how you clean a stamp with stays on, how I do it, is these are nice and when you buy the stays on I think one comes in a mist and one comes with the I call it a roller ball roller ball I haven't opened this one yet okay so you take I'm going to put the top back on this one I think it's I don't think it really matters um so you take you take the top of this because this is your roller ball and it's it's the the um, felt material. You can either lots of times I will dab it right on here. You have to squeeze it a little bit. I don't know if you can see that. And I just kind of dab it on there. And then I take this my pad. This is a different pad um, that I had in the other one. This is a little bit smaller. I just kind of brush. See how that black comes off on there. And if you don't want to put this right on your stamp, you can just soak this a little bit. But then I blot it. And then it just comes right off. Oops. And this is just a really nice, nice clean way to clean these stamps. And it does moisturize your stamps a little bit as well. So... Then you can just get any access, and your stamp is all nice and clean. And then just make sure to wash your fingers afterwards because they do get um, they get funky feeling from the from the cleaner. So okay, so we'll set those aside, and that will wrap it up with the ink and the small tools. And here's one of the little. Um, this is an eighty count. And this is just the exfoliating round cotton pads. So you can get these at your local drugstore to clean your items with. Okay, what's next? All right, I think I will finish up with the tools. Uh, we don't have much longer. 
couple tools that I have. It did take me a while to make the purchase because um, these are a little bit more expensive. Or I, sometimes I would just ask for them at, for a gift. Um, if my mom wanted to know what I wanted for Christmas or whatever, I'd tell her there was a tool that I saw and she would give me a gift certificate or she would just tell me to go pick it up and she'd wrap it up and give it to me at Christmas time. But this is the We Are Memory Keepers Cropodile Corner Chomper. And this is a really nice tool. And this is what gives you your round corners. Um, I guess I'll do it here on a black piece. Has a half inch and a quarter inch. The half inch is a little bit uh, larger round. And your quarter inch, it takes off just a nice little, little piece there. Um, I have a tendency to use the quarter inch much more than the half inch. This is a little too round for me. Um, and it's very easy to uh, empty, very easy on your hands. You just pop this top here, and then these little pieces fall out. And then you would just pop your top down and to store it. You pop those back in, and I have a little spot right here I keep it in. So that's the one tool. And then if you're a scrapbooker or if you are you know create junk journals or whatever your fancy may be this is a great uh tool this is the advanced tape glider and this is great for larger if you have you're working with 12 by 12 papers um large pieces this is 12 by i think six um and you don't want to use all your glue you can you know, I think I might have used the Yoohoo for this on here. I think I might have mentioned this before um, when I was showing you the glue. But again, I may have used my advanced tape glider. This I made a long time ago. I, I can't remember what I used. But this is a really great tool to use. Um, and it cuts down your uh, your your expense with your glue or whatever. Now, these refills this is when you use this tool you just take it you have to press your little thing here and so you can do short long however this is the tape glider and it really works great um, for larger projects and smaller projects and one tip i want to give you with the tape glider these this is very easy to thread um, don't let it intimidate you. But these are the refill packs that you have to purchase. You get two rolls of tape per one pack. So there's two rolls in here. One, two. Okay. And um, you can get these at Michael's Crafts. I don't know if they still carry them. I don't get to my Michael's very much anymore because it's 45 minutes from me and I just don't want the trek down and I, I really don't need to buy anything else. I have enough. But you get two rolls in here. It's the quarter inch by 36 yards. So you, you do get a lot. This will carry you a long way. Um, I used to use the little corner squares um, that came on a roll like these glue dots and they were little corner slips or whatever and I used to peel them off and put them on my pictures and then when I used to go to crops I'd see these women using this tool and then my girlfriend pulled one out of her um, craft bag and she said here just try this and then there was no turning back I went out and I bought one but these here when I buy my refills I do not go to a normal brick and mortar store because I can go right online. I'm going to set this aside because this is this is something that I think you should invest in um, and have on hand. I go right to the 3M site online and I buy these online. If you have a friend that you craft with and they use these as well, you can split the price of these or if you don't mind the initial investment, you know you're going to be making a lot. These are $5 a box, and you have to buy a full case. And there's 12, box, 12 of these that come in one case, so you'd be spending $60, um, right? 12, 12 times 5? 
60 yeah $60 um, so to me it's a no-brainer to make that investment because you get six packs in one you get six packs six of these in one of these boxes you're actually getting 12 refills for five dollars so and I think I think to buy one or two of these is like I think this alone is five dollars if not more at Michael's I don't know like I said I don't buy it there anymore all I know is when I saw what it cost at Michael's I said I'm not I'm just going to go online and I'm going to um, get all this myself so this is going to last me a long time I still have 10 boxes in my storage closet it doesn't go bad um, it you know there's no shrinkage to it it's it, it, it's it's something I highly recommend you do go right to their site uh, the last two items that I use as far as adhering uh, photos or any type of small ephemera are the glue dots and they do come in different sizes they have they have a half inch um, they have a three-eighths of an inch these are ultra thin you can get 300 and when you buy these it actually shows you the size of the dots up here um, this one here this is the actual size this one isn't the size you'll excuse me for my ignorance there but this one is the actual size that's your three eighths and then the ones that I use the most of I I think I'm out of I use the mini dots um, and the mini dots are really just about this size here that size there for a mini dot and you can just lift it off I use an awful lot of those for projects but these are really great and they come they come on a roll all right you can see them you can see them all here and you can either when you use these you can either peel them up with your little tool or if you don't want to do that you can just place your item on there stick it and peel it off and then go to the next dot so that way you don't have to touch them and you don't have to get your oils on them to lose the um, stickiness of them. And then this is my other, I love the foam adhesive mini circles. These are make your items more of a dimension, make them, it makes them pop up a little bit more. So another thing I wanted to tell you is these are the scrap pieces from this here don't do not throw your little honeycomb leftovers away i'll show you how you can use them say you have <clears throat> you have this little gem here and say you're working on a you're working on a uh, page and <clears throat> you just don't like the way this looks and you want to raise this up a little bit you want to just give this a little dimension well, you can do one of two things. Now, what I like to do, if I have something smaller, like this little bird, say I wanted to pop this little bird up, I would save one of these little dots for Mr. Birdie, and then I would just stick them down on there. So I get kind of selfish with my dots. I don't like to use them all up because of that. I don't, then when I have a small item, and I don't have a small dot, well, then I'm kind of SOL. So I, I like to use these sparingly. So what I like to do with these larger ones, when you have a chunk of honey, call it honeycomb, that's just my terminology. When I have a chunk of this, I cut a piece off, and then I can take this whole thing and I can adhere it right onto the back of this. And of course, you'd peel it off. You've got all of that. Then you can stick it on. And then you don't have to worry. that You still are making the same visual. Um, your visual idea that you want. You want to raise this up a little bit. But you're not using your dots that you could use down the road. So 
Um, that's just a little tip. Do not throw your honeycomb away. I used to see women at crops throw these away, and I wanted to dive in that dumpster so bad and pull them out, but I didn't want to embarrass myself because I didn't want to embarrass myself. But if nobody had been around, I would have been picking through that garbage, picking all of these things out and putting them in my stash. So um, I just don't like to waste anything. <clears throat> so those are two other items that I feel just you should have in your little grab bag that you could pull out and use. Um, we all know washi tape. Um, I have tons and tons and tons of washi tape. And for anyone out there that is, is just starting in crafting or um, you're working on special projects, don't go out and but pay full price for washi tape. You can go to, um, oh gosh, I can never think of the name of it, but I will. Um, there's a site, and I'll put it in my, under my sources, if I don't think of it by the end of this video. Um, AliExpress. I don't know why I can't think. If you go to AliExpress.com, that's where this came from. They have beautiful, beautiful washi tape, and you can get it for a fraction of the cost. You're going to have to wait a little while because it is coming um, from overseas. You may have to wait a month or two months. So if you're, you are working on a project and you need something right away, do not order from AliExpress. But if you know, <clears throat> sorry, my voice is getting, um, I usually don't talk this much. Um, but if you know you're going to be working on a fall project or a fall junk journal, scrapbook pages, order it now and you'll probably get it by Memorial Weekend if you needed pretty fall washi tapes or whatever. But you could probably get this pack here for maybe a dollar and a half. Um, they don't charge a lot for the washi tape. We used to have a, this is my mind's eye, and we used to have a shop called Tuesday Morning and I would go to Tuesday morning, every Tuesday morning, because that's when they got their new shipment in. And I would <clears throat> go to their scrapbooking section. This was $2.29. And I think they used to get a lot of the leftovers from Michael's, Joann's, um, AC Moore. And then they would just sell it at bargain basement prices. This here, I went to the clearance. You can see here, it was $4.99. And it was marked down to $5.97. Again, I will not pay full price for anything. Um, I don't think this, just my own opinion, I don't think this is worth $15. Um, these now, these used to be $15, and I could get them on sale at Michael's for $5, and I don't even think they do that anymore. I think these are now 20 something dollars for this. And again, I have so much washi tape, I don't have to buy anymore. But if you're ever in Michael's and you go to one of those um, side kiosk things or you go to the back clearance, look for these. Even if you don't think you're going to use it, um, believe me, you will. You will say, oh, I need a pink or I need something with a little cute saying on or whatever, just pick it up. If it's $5 for all of this, just grab it. Have it on hand. But washi tape is a great thing to have, to use. And you don't you don't have to have a lot. Don't go overboard. Um, things can get out of hand very quickly when it comes to supplies. Okay, the other, oh, the other thing, I've got just a couple things left. Um, if you are a scrapbooker, and you like to mount your photos and to, you know, give your photos a little outline. This is a great way to do it. I used to take my eight and a half by 11 papers, mount my photo on there, and then I would cut them. And I said, well, that's just a waste of time and it's a waste of paper. So I started buying these. It's the Paper Studio and you get this at Hobby Lobby. And when they have their 50% off the paper studio, get yourself a pack of these. They come in white, black, and then the earth tones. And um, it's very easy to mount your photos on here. These are four and a half by six and a half. So you're just going to take, you know, depending on how wide of a border you want, 
you're going to want to cut a little bit off. But this is a very good investment. And these are items that I can't live without when I do my scrapbooking. I just pull these out and I start mounting my photos on them. Then my photos go on my 12 by 12 papers. Then I can embellish around them and I'm all set. So this is a good thing right here. Okay, let's see. So let's just go back in. Let's slide right into the paper and then um, we'll be all set here. We'll be all done. Um, this here, I want to tell you about Godspeed Creations. And Missy is the owner of Godspeed Creations on Etsy. <clears throat> and I love this shop. And I try to, I haven't made a purchase in a while because I haven't had to, <clears throat> but Missy has got the best tea dyed, coffee dyed, I think most of her items are tea dyed papers, I think, on the planet. I just find um, that her tea dye is very, um, do I want to say universal? Uh, it's, it's very consistent throughout. And personally, I, I like that. I don't like to have, I like some of the shading but I don't like to have a lot of um, irregular shades in my paper. I like to have things consistent. And I use these in my junk journals. But I think Missy does a fabulous, fabulous job. I think her prices are wonderful. Um, just as an example. Um, and again, you, it's, it's Godspeed Creations on Etsy. So as an example, you can get 25 sheets of her tea dyed paper for $12.50. You can buy just like, you know, like oranges, creams, rose colored blues, or she also has them in a variety pack. She does doilies. Um, here's 25 sheets for of tea dyed green for $12.50. Uh, she has some smaller... Uh, she has smaller ones. She has, uh, let's see, 12 sheets. So she does 12 and 25 sheets. So the 12 sheets is $6.50 and the 25 sheets are $12.50. $6.50 and $12.50. She also sells um, journals. They're just blank journals. I have bought some from her. Very basic. Uh, those are $14.15. $14.15 right around there. And there's, you just buy a... Um, a set of regular, like here, uh, sorry guys, blank tea dyed travel journal um, with purple tea dyed paper, <clears throat> $15.99. So you get one, you get one color and it comes as if, as if it is a travel journal. Okay, there we go. I got it out. But visit Godspeed Creations um, Missy's a delight to work with. Her shipping is fast. Her, I just think she does a wonderful, wonderful job. And she's out of Scottsdale, Arizona. So, um, for all you Western gals out there, she's just a hop, skip and a jump away from you if you're in Cali or, um, Colorado or whatever, but she's a doll to work with. And then that brings me to my last, I gotta have it. And I think, it's something that you should have in your uh, closet as well, is 12 by 12 paper. You don't have to have a lot. Um, I do have a lot. I've been collecting for 22 years. I am a paper addict. I have paper that I have had for 20 years. I haven't even cut. I haven't used. I haven't put it in my scrapbooks. I have a hard time with it. And I try to think why. I'm like that, but I can remember when I was a little girl, my father used to take me to the um, wallpaper store. My parents were very big into wallpaper and I would sit there and I would, the name of the store was McBride's and I would sit there and I would look through all the wallpaper books and I love the smell of the wallpaper and I love the smell of the wallpaper paste when my parents were um, doing my bedroom and the living room and the dining room. And they always let me pick out my own wallpaper for my room. Um, and I just, I go back, I used to buy a lot of stationery when I was in the seventh grade. 
Um, I would walk up to our local Hallmark store and I would buy stationery and cards with my allowance. And um, I just love paper. So this paper, Authentique, and again, I do not pay full price for a pad of paper. This one I got it Tuesday morning for $5.99. And unfortunately, our Tuesday morning went out of business. Um, but I love the Authentique paper because it's a wonderful, it's just a wonderful paper. It's double-sided and their images are amazing. So this one I'm saving to use with my mom, with her, when I eventually get around to scrapbooking her as a young girl and her and my dad. Um, so I have this one. And then the other one <clears throat> that I would highly recommend is We Are Memory Keeper paper pads. These are not double-sided. However, uh, these are sold at Michael's and you used to be able to get these for $5. They would have these huge bins in their aisle and they would just be chuck full of We Are Memory Keeper paper pads. Normally a paper pad now runs anywhere between $14.99 and $19.99. I won't pay that. I got these for $5. And the other thing you have to remember, if you're, if you like to make boxes or special um, items and you only need a six by six piece of paper, get yourself a paper pad, one paper pad that, now a six by six paper pad, I think nowadays is anywhere from $4.99 to $6.99 if it's double-sided. If you don't need double-sided, get yourself a pad for $5 and one piece of paper, you will get a you'll get four six by six pieces out of one 12 by 12. Uh, and you'll save yourself a whole heck of a lot of money. Um, so everybody should have some 12 by 12 paper pads um, in their stash and, you know, whatever you may want to do with them. So today I'm, I just wanted to share with you my go-tos, the things that I feel I just need on an everyday basis when I sit down at my desk and I start working on my paper projects. If I didn't have anything else, I wouldn't need anything else because I've got my paper. I have, um, you know, other than my embellishments, yes, everybody always needs some ephemera and, and embellishments and things like that. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about just your staples that you need, like your, your eggs, your butter, your milk, um, you know, your bread, things that you need in your cupboard that they're just go-to items and that you need, that you know you'll use every day. And that's what I wanted to share with you today. So I hope I gave you a little bit of insight. I hope I helped you um, save a little bit of money where you can save some money. Um, I hope I opened up your mind to think, you know, do I really need that? You know, is it a should? Should I? You know, is it a, a, a must, a should or a want? You know, well, yeah, I'd like to have it, but I don't really need it. But yes, that that I that I really need. That I'm going to use every single day. Um, you know, make your investment where you need it. Uh, it's just like, you know, when I hike in the wintertime, there are things I can cut back on, but I know I have to spend money on a really good pair of, of hiking boots that's going to bring me through the winter, a, a good pair of pants, you know, um, insulated, nice, nice pants, almost like, not ski pants, but they make hiking pants for the winter. And, you know, if you get, if you, for your basic staples, if you make that investment, but you don't go overboard and you wait for the sales, you can build, um, you can build a nice collection of items that will last you and you're, they're not going to need to be replaced. You know, with my cutter, make sure you find a cutter that does have a lifetime guarantee where you don't have to keep going, you know, turning around if you drop it or whatever and say, okay, now I have to spend another $30 on a paper cutter. No, find one with a lifetime guarantee that will honor it. Um, and that will take care of your needs. So, um, yeah, that's it, everyone. Thanks for joining in. And next time we will maybe make a, a fun project and I'll, I'll see you down the road. Have a good week. And like I said, I'll see you in my next video. Okay, everybody. Bye-bye.